My name is Armin, I'm a product specialist at Notch, and in this tutorial we will talk about network editing. Notch Builder Pro is able to remotely edit Notch projects running a standalone or block on local or remote machines. Changes made in Builder will instantly be reflected on the remote standalone or block that is running in a media server. Let's export this scene as block for media server and use FX Player to play it back. FX Player is a simple media server emulator that works as a reference tool to track Notch block performance and allows you to preview Notch block playback when the actual media server is not available. So let's start by exporting this design as a media server block. I'm going to go for projects, compile block for media server, and I'm going to make sure that I'm leaving it off on my desktop. I'm going to hit OK and let's give it a moment to compile. Great, I see that the export is done. My block is available for me here on my desktop. So I think now it's a good time to navigate to FX Player and launch it. So I'm going to go for Windows, Program Files. I'm going to navigate to Notch Folder. And here I see FX Player Host DirectX 11 executable. I'm going to launch it. I will start by resizing this window so it doesn't take the whole screen real estate. There we go. And we can close off this window now. Okay, I think now I'm ready to load the block. So I'm going to go for load block. I'm going to navigate to the desktop and grab the very block that we exported. Simple TV stage. Let's give it a moment to load up. Okay, so I see that the block is playing back. I have a couple of panels here available for me. And before we start network editing session, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to reduce the resolution here a little bit. I'm going to go for 920. 518 resolution so it fits just a little bit better here in my available real estate on the screen as you see i have some basic stats on the performance of the block in the fx player so i see the average milliseconds it takes to render a frame and the general frame rate since this design consists of a couple of layers i actually can see them here in the second tab instances and as you see, if there's an open parameter, that is displayed and available for use as well. Right, I think now we're definitely ready to network connect to this block. So I will go for devices, network connections, and I'm going to connect to this block. Now, if I was using this block on another machine, I would refer to the IP address of the machine that I want to connect to. Since I'm running the block and builder on the same machine, I can just leave this as a local host. So I'm going to hit connect. And here I have a selection of available blocks that can be connected to. In this case, there's only one simple TV stage. That's great. I'm going to hit OK and OK again. And now I am in session with this block. So what is the best way to know that this connection is valid? Well, the easiest way is to go for view and enable the connection monitor. So connection monitor, it gives you basic stats of the connectivity. In this case, we see that we are connected via local host. This is our port number that was designated automatically. And this is the name of the block that we are referring to. Here in the second line, we can see the connectivity speed by bytes sent and bytes received. So once we're in a network session, we can actually make changes to our scene from Builder and it will be reflected directly in the block. For instance, if I grab something like thin post effect, I can apply it in Builder and the change is made will be seen in the block instantly. So not only I can make alterations to the scene, I can actually open new parameters to be controlled in the media server while I'm in network connection session. For instance, I want to open this blend amount parameter. I'm going to set it to zero as a default, and I will hit on a question mark icon that allows me to expose this parameter. First of all, I'm going to set the minimum and maximum value. In this case, I just need a value from zero to one. And let's expose this parameter. As soon as the parameter is exposed, I already see it here in my properties window. This workflow is not limited to just post effects. You can take advantage of any node available in the node list here. So I think I will add some primitive geometry. I'm going to go for shape 3D. I'm going to connect it to the root. And you will see that as I'm moving, the shape 3D is actually available there in the block and it's moving together with the builder's positions. So let's talk a little bit more about the connection monitor. From the connection monitor panel, I can actually switch layers inside of the media server. All I have to do is enable the layer select, and then go to the desired layer here in Builder, and hit on a switch to selected layer. All of a sudden, I am seeing the layer that I selected from the Builder 
in the media server. So this is extremely handy if you need to preview quite a few layers running in a media server. So for now, I'm going to switch back to the first layer. There we go. Switch to the selected layer. Third property available for us here is control time from builder. Now this property is reserved to the executables. So if we were to export a standalone application, we would be able to control the playback time of the executable via builder's timeline. Now, since we're playing this back in the media server, media server is treated a little bit different. So this property is not applicable. So let's head a little bit further and let's talk about profiling. So profiling allows you to see the performance of your nodes in the GPU and CPU milliseconds. This property is not reserved just to the builder. You can actually see the performance of the nodes in your block as well. All you have to do is enable profiling and choose network. As you see, numbers are updating a tiny bit slower, but they reflect the performance of the block and you can actually track it here in Builder. Now bear in mind, since you have the profiler enabled, the performance drops a little bit because you're making extra calculation. So once you're done tracking the performance and making necessary changes, make sure to disable it. Okay, now I will switch to the second layer, test. And let's talk about track exposed parameters property. I'm going to enable it. And as you see, it indicates that I have two active instances, meaning that I have two layers available. I'm going to click on that. So with track exposed parameters enabled, I can control the exposed parameters from media server and they will be reflected in the builder. So this property is extremely handy if you're working with a tracked object or a trackable camera. Basically, you see all the real-time behaviors and all the real-time swipes that are happening in media server reflected in Builder. So that definitely helps a lot if you're in a network editing session and you need to make some live changes. Now, as you see, time is not aligned in uh, these two instances. For that, we have the last option here, track play time. As soon as that is engaged, all of a sudden, media server timeline takes over notch builder timeline and all the changes and animations align. There are a couple of extra things that are worth mentioning. Remote connection works over TCP IP with each block or standalone listening on an auto selected port. You can use remote editing over a solid Wi Fi connection as well as wired. At the moment, all of the changes that we're making in the builder are only reflected in the block. To lock in and save all the changes you've made, you would have to recompile the blocks. You would have to go for project, compile block for media server, overwrite the block, or make a new instance that you would be able to swap out in a media server. I think this concludes the basic network editing tutorial. See you in the next one.